making sure that everything is synchronized and absolutely running to time. Not so very long ago, Liverpool thrashed Brighton in the FA Cup, 6-1 at Anfield. Two of those six Liverpool goals were Brighton own goals. It would be an enormous surprise if Liverpool were to sweep aside Brighton so comfortably today on Sussex turf. This is Tarek Lamptey. Very, very talented young man who has struggled to get minutes in this Brighton team this season. His throw-in is uh, flicked on by Evan Ferguson and Alisson gets his first touch in the Liverpool goal. As you touched on just a moment ago, Matt, it's, it's energy and intensity is what Liverpool struggled to find this season. Surprising, isn't it? Because it's the one thing that Jurgen Klopp brought to the club when he first arrived seven years ago and they've adapted brilliantly and obviously had huge success along the way but I was at this fixture in the Premier League with Brighton were absolutely superb in the 3-0 home win and Liverpool just couldn't get anywhere near them they dominated them with the ball with the second uh, ball possession you know energy across the park and I think this is a chance for Liverpool to turn up in a cup time and really put that right Jason Steele in the Brighton goal today one of the players of Brighton's season, Kairou Mitoma, who gave Trent Alexander-Arnold a bit of a run-around in that game. Yeah, that wasn't a, a match-up that went well for Liverpool at all in that game. Trent Alexander-Arnold there looking a little bit more determined in that challenge there. Mitoma, lovely take, and tried to get behind him, but Alexander-Arnold just matched him. He's going to need to deal with him 1v1s today, because Brighton will feed that ball out to that left-hand side whenever they can. The ball inside by Solly March finds Tarek Lamptey and it's well covered by Gomez. There's the pace of Lamptey, which is always such a big part of his game. Just been kept in by Solly March, who's done well to get it back into Lamptey and that's come off by Cetic for a Brighton corner kick it's a big role isn't it for an 18 year old that big statement from Jurgen Klopp an area of the pitch that he really feels needs freshening up I think and that's just a key example a young player coming in in such an experienced role so first corner of the game is a Brighton corner fewer than three minutes played Sonny March with that delivery, well taken by Alisson. And uh, he was just fouled as he tried to deliver that. Good take, wasn't it? Right over his head, had to be strong with the challenge coming in from McAllister. Tiago goes forward, ball is fouled, Naby Keita, and Keita has just got a around Lewis Duncan, he's found Mohamed Salah, Estupinian in front of him, Webster with the block, Salah for Liverpool, off the line by Dunk, just sliced by Naby Keita, cleared away off the goal line by Lewis Dunk. Mitoma into McAllister, already a really good pace about this game, Pascal Gross driving forward, well covered by Konate. He just holds on to it too long there, Pascal Gross, smacks his hands in frustration because he knows the space was there. That ball has to be left in behind. If he does that, Liverpool are in big trouble. What a good couple of counter-attacks we've seen already. Lewis Dunk off the line there, Steve. Yeah. Incredible clearance off the line from Lewis Dunk. Liverpool very nearly in front very early on in this tie. Virgil van Dijk injured, of course, at the moment for Liverpool. Gomez and Konate in possession of those central defensive berths at the moment. What we've seen from Matoma as well, haven't we, on that left-hand side? I mean, he's so calm under pressure and technically, when he's dribbling and running with the ball, he's excellent. Here is the... Uh, Japanese international finding Purvis and Stupinian. Pascal 
Rose has played right back, left back, and number 10, central midfield today. A mistake by Gross, Thiago onto it quickly, well recovered, Lewis Dunn. Stupinian into Mitoma. Gakpo has fed Mohamed Salah, Gakpo is doing everything he can to provide Salah with options. And that's what Salah looked for, but Webster was in the way. To see Salah cut inside and shoot from that kind of position. It just shows you maybe where he's at at the moment in terms of belief and confidence. Probably a little bit down in the, the usual Mo Salah that we see at this stage of the season. Alexander Arnold, wonderful ball, bent off the outside of his boot. And Salah wins the corner off Estupinian. Great vision from Alexander Arnold. Well, already. In this opening six minutes, we've probably seen more from Liverpool than we saw in the whole 90 minutes in the Premier League game two weeks ago. They've certainly got a bit more purpose and edge to them about, about them. Super pass this one. And it's very Trent Alexander-Arnold, isn't it? Vision, and the ability to execute with that right foot outside of the boot, the pace of the pass was superb. And I should imagine this delivery from the corner won't be too bad either. Alexander Arnold swinging, and Sonny March hasn't quite dealt with it. Keita, then Dunk. Pitch right underneath that. Gross saw it blocked, nearly fell to Gakpo. Has fallen to Harvey Elliott. Never looked as comfortable dragging that onto his right foot, always cutting across the ball from Harvey Elliott. This is where Brighton like to play a lot now. They did it excellent in that Premier League game, just being able to draw Liverpool in and the confidence to play out from the back in those tight areas. Joe Gomez concedes the throw in. But he matched Solly March in the foot race. All kinds of theories about why Liverpool are not at the level that they've become accustomed to. Some physical, some psychological. The truth is, it's probably a bit of everything. A little bit of instability in the club as well, isn't there? It's up for sale. Changes things a little bit. You know, yeah, some of the key backroom personnel have left Absolutely. in terms of recruitment. Ah! And at this level, slightly take your eye off the ball really has a big impact, and it has done for Liverpool. Ferguson got in front of him, but couldn't quite get a touch on it. It could be a long afternoon out there on the right-hand side for Trent Alexander-Arnold, it really could. This guy is in super confident form. Brighton. 
lovely confident play again from Brighton. Pascal Gross with the touch and just use his body to shield this ball, not allow Thiago to win it. Just hacks him down in the end, but to play out from that corner, the pass from Solly March to Pascal Gross was really good. We count three fouls in that challenge from Thiago. Yeah, yeah. he had a few hacks, didn't he? So ten played nil nil, but uh, lots of promise about this game. Brighton do look, look like they're just sitting Ferguson a little bit deeper. That's a great ball, that. Well dealt with by Ibrahima Konate because Mitoma had made that good run. Thiago there ahead of Gross. And Cetic for Liverpool. Don't for Brighton. As Liverpool were chasing trophies on four fronts last season. People have had this uh, theory that it's been psychologically damaging for them to go so close to four and end up in inverted commas only with two. I think sometimes when you've been at a club for that amount of time that Jurgen Klopp has, style has a little bit to play in terms of how much your longevity is. Because Liverpool play a real high octane game. And doing that season after season after season, season can be draining for a group of players in comparison to a Manchester City who would just control games, have the ball a lot of the time, slow it down. Liverpool play on that front foot all the time. I think that the, the style can weigh a little bit heavy over the seasons back to back. Yeah, the top of his, uh... The 1,000 game landmark as a manager over the course of some 23 seasons. It's interesting that his previous club, at a similar time, they had a little bit of a dip as well, didn't they? At Dortmund. At Dortmund, they did, yeah. yeah. Well, he's picked up the reins where Graham Potter left off, and if anything, he's improved them. for Robertson. Possession, but not much penetration at the moment from Liverpool. Patience is the watchword here. Brighton have sat in really well, very organised, out of possession. Not allowing Liverpool to play through the middle of the pitch. Thiago's and the ball into Mohamed Salah. So back with the challenge, Solly March. With the opportunity to attack now for Brighton. Mitoma and Ferguson and Welbeck in the middle. March went through Welbeck. It's Ferguson's off the line. Alexander Arnold in the right place. 
to deny Ferguson. Well, we've seen goal line clearances at both ends now. That should be a goal. Brighton, patient defensive work, win the ball, the space as Robertson's gone in advance, is on the left-hand side of Liverpool's defence, and Solly March picks out a brilliant cross, I have to say, really gets his head up, and that should be 1-0. Trent Alexander-Arnold in a great position, in fairness to him, but Ferguson should just smash that past him, even go high into the roof of the net. Not sure how it's still 0-0 after a uh, really engrossing first quarter now, but it is. here, March with the drive, and he's been in terrific goal scoring form this season, Solly March, which is not something you've ever been able to say about him in the past. That's always been the thing that's lacking with Solly March, brilliant player, doesn't score enough goals from the positions he gets himself in, but he's put that right recently, there's that tackle from Bicesic on Pascal Gross, the referee allows play on for the shot. He's just had a word with the young midfielder. Yeah, it's a little bit late, wasn't it? And he has been put for that challenge. Stefan Vajcetic, Jürgen Klopp thinks that's harsh. He goes to ground, doesn't win the ball. It's late on Gross, it's not the most aggressive or, or dangerous of tackles I've ever seen. I can understand that perspective from Jürgen Klopp, but you miss the ball and you go to ground and you commit, there's every chance you're going to come out with a yellow card and there's going to be a lot more tackles he's going to have to make in this game by Cesic. He's got to be careful. From a footballing family, his dad uh, played for Red Star Belgrade and Celta Vigo, hence Vigo being the place of his birth. Football for Brighton, Jason Steele, 32 year old. It's only his 14th game for the club since joining from Sunderland, playing second fiddle to Robert Sanchez in the May. Not enough in that challenge from Robertson for referee David Coote to award a free kick. Yeah, looked a dive, didn't it, from Ferguson? Decision, very experienced linesman. Not enough contact there. He knows what he wants there, Ferguson. He's got the wrong side of Robertson, but there's nowhere near enough contact to go down. And his assistant, Darren Cann, unimpressed. <laughs> so he for Kato, like that over the top of Alexis McAllister. One of those Liverpool players whose contract will be up at the end of the season and who it seems is uh, unlikely to be around next campaign that's an awkward fall yeah he's in a little bit of trouble here Cater you hit your head on the floor really can have some kind of impact he's up and on his feet hopefully okay between Brighton and Liverpool was in this competition 115 years ago. There's a one-all draw in Sussex, Liverpool won the replay. Win it! Yes, Robo again! Welbeck. Plenty of encouragement for Liverpool on the from the touchline to get after the ball. Brighton are doing it well, and Liverpool just can't keep possession across the back line into midfield. They're giving it away a lot with the pressure that Brighton are putting forward. 
Kovacic to cut out the Estupinian pass, but Thiago's lost possession. Estupinian there ahead of Navi Keita, and Keita has fouled Mitoma. Oh, he's played through Mitoma to win the ball here, gets his body in, in the line. You can see clearly contacts Mitoma, and then a little bit of the ball, but it's a bit clumsy from Keita. play really the faint here just to send everyone and come inside absolutely brilliant lovely flick from Ferguson another little dummy from Mitoma I mean he's so clever how he sees it and reacts that little shimmy there just completely commits Joe Gomez slightly off balance with a left footed strike just scuffs it into the ground but lovely play again from Mitoma Get put into Mohamed Salah Keita Stupinia. She says play on, Canate's challenge on Ferguson. Alexander Arnold can't find Andrew Robertson. The right foot was just out a tad there, unusual for Alexander Arnold. He's normally absolutely inch perfect with that right foot. He's going to need to be today. His creativity is a massive part of how Liverpool are and how dangerous they are as a team from scoring. There's at least once or twice in a game he puts a ball in, which is a brilliant assist. He does it so often. But he's certainly going to have at least half a mind yeah. on uh, defensive duties today, Alexander Arnold. No doubt about but, that. But he's almost in the team, Steve, to bring that offensive play because they sacrificed the, the defensive side of his game and, he, you know, you're not going to get that from Trent Alexander-Arnold at the moment. Mr. Pignan heading forward. play from Canate. Didn't have to do too much, just had to get his body across and block that run of, of Welbeck. Welbeck, the FA Cup winner in his time with Arsenal. Continued his run, Elliot beautifully into Salah, he's missed it. Well, that is most unlike Mohamed Salah, the kind of opportunity he just feeds on. Well, he's central position, which is brilliant, times the run, looks offside, but I think Lamptey is playing him on slightly deeper. You're absolutely right, Steve, from that position. How many times have you seen Mo Salah just bury this into the back of the net? And he really doesn't get a good contact on the ball at all. Much better position, much better foresight from Liverpool to be creative and be direct and play those forward passes, but it's a shame it didn't have the quality finish at the end. 
sure you're right about that, T. I'm sure that uh, Salah was just onside. Interesting game. Isn't it? Yeah, very good tactical battle and quite cagey. Both teams trying to play out and some really good pressing going on. All the possession statistics are uh, exactly shared. Often Brighton don't have 60-plus uh, possession in a game. Particularly here. Be good for Webster to get some minutes. He's uh, been on the periphery over the last couple of months. There's another player in Liverpool of... Um, Brighton have recruited in Levi Colwell, who's just come into that role and been excellent for them at centre-back. Injured at the moment, but another good signing that Brighton have made this season. Yeah, Colwell's uh, is on loan from Chelsea. He's another former Chelsea youngster, of course. Say Brighton have been marginally the more dangerous yeah. of the two sides, and yet, actually, in terms of chances, as, as you could say, Salah's obviously a big one, and then the dunk on one off the line. Pretty even, but I, I feel that, that Brighton just a little bit more dangerous going forward. Liverpool look a little bit more susceptible to concede than Brighton. Stop with Toma. It's a great ball by Elliot into Salah. Fabinho and Darwin Nunez enjoyed it. Here's Cody Gakpo. Elliot and Salah are with him. Gakpo carrying it, looking for Salah. It's come back to Salah. Good reactions by Steele. Not entirely convinced Salah was onside, but good goalkeeping. I think there's an early chance to play it here now. Put that ball in behind for Salah. He opts to go with it, Gakpo, but he is on side when the ball's played. It's a good interception from Lamptey. That's more the position that you're used to seeing Gakpo, isn't it? Dropping deeper, picking the ball up, and then driving with it. Next to World Cup for the Netherlands, scoring once in each of their three group matches. Gakpo. on the overlap almost bought March uh, sight of goal that run from Lamptey but it's well blocked it shows you the importance of that run even if you don't get the ball as a fullback what it does for the man on the ball is create that space for them to go inside and get shots off exactly like that that Solly March just took Punched out of his hands by uh, Harvey Elliott a moment ago, feigning to throw it back to Gakpo and then dropping it. It's Stupina. Mitoma, it's a good ball. It just flipped off Joe Gomez, healed in it. Looks like it's going to be a goal kick. Well, everything he touches at the moment, Mitoma. He's of top quality. One touch pass this time, not a dribble, perfectly weighted. Just can't quite take it in his stride, Esther Pinion. But they've got a nice little link up going on that left hand side, haven't they? Esther Pinion and Mitoma. Really good attacking threat. Keita finding Mohamed Salah. 
Elliott driving forward, Gakpo driving forward. It's Harvey Elliott for Liverpool, and it's in! The man is goal that Molyneux fired Liverpool into the fourth round of the FA Cup has put them in front at Brighton. Harvey Elliott still just a teenager. Lewis Dunk takes a real gamble here just to get in front of Salah and OK, he wins the ball, but the ball then pops straight out to Salah and Brighton are in trouble, they're outnumbered. The run looks onside to me from Harvey Elliott, and I have to say, with his left foot, well, being a left-footed player, the finish with the right foot is absolutely excellent. Just gets his has, has a little glance very early, knows exactly where Steele's coming out and just guides that into the far post. I don't Not... think there's anything wrong with the execution, but VAR are checking this right at the beginning of the move, possibly. Danny Welbeck was appealing for something. It might have been a handball there, it is. Goal stands. I think that would have been harsh, wouldn't it? I think when it's 70 yards away. Yeah. It would have been. Liverpool been lead. They've been threatening, haven't they? Both teams threatening, but Liverpool a couple of times times on the counter. And that was a classic example of just a little bit of overcommitting from Lewis Dunk. I tried to win that ball. Left him short at the back and Liverpool take full advantage. Sonny March momentarily was behind Gomez. It's goal, it's Mitoma looking to reply for Brighton. I think Chetic got enough of the ball there. And it's Harvey Elliott's fifth goal for Liverpool. And they've won all the previous four matches in which he scored. One of them by nine goals to nil against Bournemouth and one by seven goals to one against Rangers. Not sure we'll get that scoreline today. Ferguson to March. That is cross, deciding to punch. It was a decent cross with his left foot there as well from Tariq Lamptey. Held up by Gakpo, I think he was hoping he'd get a free kick. play from Mitoma, who cost Brighton somewhere in the region of two and a half million pounds. It's an extraordinary deal. That's the that's where uh, Brighton were appealing for handball. And it came off his thigh onto his hand, very little contact with the arm. Good finish. Really good finish, actually. Not easy, that. Hasn't got a lot to aim at, Harvey Elliott see why Brighton are appealing the handball it clearly was you know a handball from K to in sense of the ball was jammed between his leg and his arm but I think at the moment you have to it has to lead almost immediately yes, to a goal being correct. scored correct it's too far and it wasn't away from the actual goal going in which is why it's been allowed to 
to move forwards, but Liverpool only look really threatening from those scenarios. It's going to be a turnover in midfield, it's going to be a, a, the wrong decision from a Brighton player that leads to Liverpool having a chance at the moment, as opposed to Liverpool really building the, the play up from the back. So I think Brighton have got them penned in nicely. Ferguson touched them with Konate. Ferguson looks a fantastic player to win. Young Irishman, Republic of Ireland player, and um, I can only imagine it will be a very short space of time before he gets international honours because Ireland aren't blessed with, uh, haven't been for a number of years with reliable goal scorers really since Robbie Keane, I suppose. But um, this guy looks cut out for it. It could be a blessing for them, couldn't it? For sure. It's not the way he's always on the move, he's got great anticipation. Even when Liverpool have the ball, he's kind of anticipating if his teammates win it, where's it going to drop? And he's on the move there already. Good ball by Keitas. Almost got onto that. Turned towards his own goal and saw Gappo was there. Give us a quick comparison, Matt, if you will, between the first 36 minutes of this game and the league game, first 36 minutes of the league game you watched two weeks ago. There's not much comparison, to be honest, in terms of the Liverpool that have turned up here today are completely different, look, look more organised, more at it, certainly a, a much bigger goal threat in what they've created so far in the opening 36 minutes. And Brighton, though, are pretty similar, I have to say, consistently playing well. Thiago, Salah, who should have scored before Elliot did. Lovely to touch that. Taking a bit of a chance there. And Liverpool have lost it. Return to Welbeck. Opposite. Yeah, a lot of spin on the ball. It's just indicating that to him. He's wanted to head it out for a throw in, but the moment he headed it, it just kicked right and out for a corner. Two to one corners in Brighton's favour, one to nil goals in Liverpool's. Final touch on this. I think it was Dunk who the ball hit as Lamptey has too much space on the edge of the box. It gets clear, but there's nobody in that area. Too much time for Lamptey to arrive on this ball, and I think it just hits Lewis Dunk. Whether or not he flicks out a little foot here, this is a good angle to see it. I'm sure he'll be claiming it somehow. Just there, it oh, like yeah. he, he did just try and yeah. guide that into the net. It's a clever little touch from Lewis Dunk. 
a really subtle piece of play or whether or not it hits his standing foot either way he just tries to pull his body out of the way and it hits him perfectly wrong foot to Allison absolutely no chance to react well it's Lewis Dunk's goal all right it's 1-1 one, one. I think that little smile just says it all Steve don't you it's his first goal of the season he's approaching 400 games for Lewis Dunk he's like the uh, thread through the old stick of Brighton Rock it doesn't seem to matter what's around him or what shape Brighton play Lewis Dunk is always right at the heart of whatever they do but they're under pressure again here as Elliot tries to force it forward Webster's cushioned header to steal I mean you have to say Brighton have probably deserved to be level in this game going in at half time I don't think he'll mind how it goes in has a uh, long-standing uh, run of scoring own goals against yeah. his name over the years, Lewis Dunk. He scored six own goals in his career at Brighton, including one against Liverpool. Actually, I think he might have scored two own goals in the same game against Liverpool a few years ago. That is a bad day at the office. It's the nature in how he defends. You know, he throws everything at it, blocks, tackles, always going to get a few that deflect in the wrong way he was a young player when I was at the club he was a really bright talent I think Gus Poyet really was quite harsh on him trying to knock him into shape and get him into the right mentality to play and he's really matured well and like you say he's been absolutely ever present across the seasons for Brighton and it doesn't really matter if they play a four or a three no. or whatever formation they play one of them is always Lewis Dunn yeah Absolutely, he's comfortable in either. Maybe better in a three, if I'm honest, because I think it just allows him to, to come out with the ball. He's got a lovely range of long range of passing. Tiago to Gakpo, Gakpo's little change of feet took him away from McAllister. He's fed Elliot, Elliot, oh, poor touch. Lamchi's clearance nearly hit Mohamed Salah. Referee wants treatment here for Harvey Elliott. It was a great chance for him to get his second of the game. Well, he's just picked up great positions in this game, Harvey Elliott. Look at the way he just makes that little run behind, pulls off. The moment Gakpo's there, and that lovely role that he's playing a bit deeper. And how about that for a challenge? That is commitment from Tariq Lamptey. The expression on his face says it all. I'm going to win that ball. Does nearly just deflect into the middle of the pitch, and it could have backfired, but... Brilliant tackle from Lamptey. It's a slightly heavy touch from Elliot, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it wasn't perfect, just gave him a nibble. And boy, did he take it. A nod of the head from Harvey Elliott suggests he's OK. The youngest player ever to start a game for Liverpool and previously the youngest player ever to represent Fulham. He's still only 19. He's got a bash off the backside of Jason Steele, the goalkeeper. He's looked good in that advanced role, hasn't he? Took up, doesn't mind going central. I think he's happy to just drift into that central area. And if Gakpo's going to be as deep as what he has been a couple of times, it's tailor-made for him just to make that little run in behind. It may not be where his Liverpool future lies, however, because you must remember that they also have on the injured list at the moment the likes of Diogo Jota and Luis Diaz. Yep. Darwin Nunez is on the bench here. There's Salah, there's Firmino. So uh, a little bit of competition. Three for Liverpool are going to be hard to get. And when they're all fit, that is. Steel. Fortuitous. Salah hustling and harrying Alexis McAllister. Just a little bit too much for the referee David Coots liking. We're into the last 
minute of uh, normal time in the first half. It's been a very, very entertaining fourth round tie so far. There'll be a minimum of two added minutes. Here's Tariq Lapti. Mark Twelbeck and Ferguson are in the middle. Lapti scooping in across, which Ferguson pushes down in the direction of Alexis McAllister. Credit Mohamed Salah for coming back and helping out. taking advantage of the coming together of Gakpo and McAllister. You've not seen Liverpool play through Brighton from this area of the pitch much at all in this game. They've had plenty of possession in and around the back there which will bump the stats up. In terms of breaking lines and cutting through the midfield and progressing forwards, they haven't really been able to do that too much in this opening 45. Which is nearly at an end. There is David Coote's whistle. So an excellent first 45 minutes, it really has been. Harvey Elliott with a very tidy finish to put Liverpool in front. But Lewis Dunk with a flick on a shot from Tarek Lamptey, which diverted the ball away from Liverpool's goalkeeper, Alisson, with the equaliser for Brighton. More, much more entertainment to come in the second half. Good tie this, half-time at the Amex. Brighton and Hove Albion won, Liverpool won. Adam Webster, Veltman often plays right back for Brighton, but he'll be playing as the right-sided centre-half as they kick off the second period, with uh, Joel Veltman now alongside Lewis Dunk. There's another player who's relatively versatile, isn't he? Joel Veltman, lots of experience. And I agree, I think it must be a problem with Adam Webster. Had a decent first 45 minutes and I don't think that change would have happened unless there's some kind of injury issue of some kind. Here goes Lamptey. Confronted by Robertson, looking for the return, blocked by Joe Gomez. Time Ajax player who featured in that uh, dramatic Champions League two legged semi final against Tottenham Hotspur back in uh, 2019, wasn't it? Nearly four years ago now. An unbelievable game, wasn't it? Yeah. What, one, one he'll probably be trying to forget. That's well back. into another shirt from on well back there momentarily. Liverpool no changes at half time. Their lineup is as they were in the first period. Here goes uh, Mitoma, levered by Alexander Arnold, just on the right side of legal from the Liverpool fullback. Well, just about, but Alexander Arnold nowhere near the ball here. Just tries to run across his path and yeah, tries to commit the foul, but. The distances he has between him and Mitoma. When Mitoma builds up a head of speed and is running at him, you just feel he's going to glide past him every time. This is McAllister's ball blocked by Thiago.
up the idea just to chest this one down to Thiago, but the ball just drops a little bit lower, and that right arm comes across from Gakpo. Sonny March with the cross, dangerous! Good ball in, that was. So inviting this from Solly March. Just I think Matoma really gambles just quite early enough to get across the face of Alexander-Arnold. Once the ball bounced, it was always going to be too high for him. Started the second half well, Brighton. We have barely had any meaningful possession yet since the resumption. Steal to Feltman. Oh, great touch. Just caught by Cody Gakpo, but his first touch invited Gakpo to try and win it. Yeah, it was good pressure from Liverpool. They sensed danger and tried to push in on Brighton. And you can see there Gakpo a little bit late on Veltman, just catches his ankle. But they don't mind taking a bit of a risk, Brighton, in that area of the pitch. They're not just going to clear their lines or kick it long. They, they'll play out at, from any situation. to Welbeck. He'll be in the book soon. It's clever little touch here from McAllister. Sees the, the run coming from Gakpo and just drives across his path. Knows exactly what he's doing, takes the contact. He's got a good talking to. This McAllister might if he feels he's uh, recovered from that challenge. Fancy this free kick. I seem to remember he scored a brilliant free kick against Leicester earlier this season from this kind of position. And that's at uh, this end of the Amex as well, actually. My only concern is he's got up from that challenge and he's carrying his right leg a little bit, whether or not he feels ready to take on a strike of this magnitude. I'm not too sure he's walking away from the ball now and leaving it up to this man, Lewis Dunk. Books for the last time Lewis Duck scored twice in a game if this goes in. It wasn't all that far away, it's the unorthodox. Gets plenty of movement on the ball. Look at his technique, he tries to hit that one over. Look at the dip and swerve on that. Great angle here. Really did drop down quickly. Had Alisson scampering a little bit. at the end of training every day by uh, stepping up for free kicks on the edge of the penalty area. Oh, he's certainly that type of player, Lewis Dunn. <laughs> well, this first five minutes of the second half has been almost all Brighton. After Alexis McAllister would be too. They've got an awful lot of players that other clubs would covet. But it does come a point we would imagine which Brighton will have to say no more. They've already sold Kukurea, Mope, and Trossard this season. I kind of add Basuma to that list of type of players as well, can't you? Not too long before them. Yes, in the summer window, yeah. Yes, yeah, a lot of talent, isn't it? Leaving the squad. A lot of money, about 150 million pounds worth has come in. Which probably strengthens your hand in the transfer market because uh, Brighton presumably have no need of uh, another injection of cash so they can 
hold those who want their players to a certain amount of hostage. What's incredible, they seem to appear to have kind of layers of that talent filtering through all the time. You know, Basuma goes, McAllister steps in, Kukurea goes, Estupinian steps in and doesn't seem to weaken the team too much. And even when the manager left, it didn't seem to weaken no. the team. Like I say, even made, potentially made him stronger. Although Graham Potter does have to take a lot of credit for a lot of the work he did building this group of players and the way that they play. Frustrated look straight away. Should not be caught offside. You're the furthest man, you've got time to stay on. It's a poor position from Mitoma in what would have been a really interesting situation again. We've got any rhythm going at all in this second half. Mitoma's little cushion header, Tiago is there. Touch there from Ferguson again. A lovely cushioned one touch. You, you look at the way he plays, you think he's going to be a bit physical and bullish, but he's got that quality of touch as well. Fans enjoying that error. And it's his McAllister. from Alexander-Arnold, Allison with the half block, brought down by March and over the top from Pascal Gross. But it all starts with Mitoma. Well, he's just got the beating of Trent Alexander-Arnold at the moment. It's two players there. It's just far too easy for him to drop a shoulder and go round the outside. Not too sure if Salah's really doing too much to help Alexander-Arnold there in terms of communication and where they want to show him. It's the strike from Gross in the middle of the park, but Mitoma on the left-hand side. Brighton will just be filtering that ball out there as early as possible, get it out there early, as much space around Trent Alexander-Arnold as they can, and just leave him 1v1. Exceptional talent. sitting on the Liverpool substitutes bench hoping that Trent Alexander-Arnold doesn't pull a car for something. <laughs> Robertson's throw to Elliot. Here's Keita. Now Robertson. With John Feltman. This is almost Liverpool's first attack of the second half. Alexander Arnold to Harvey Elliott. Alexander this ball in, and well, I'm sure the Gakpo didn't get in Salah's way there. Well, there's the cross that we always see from Trent Alexander Arnold. I knew there was going to be one or two moments in this game where he delivers match winning quality, which that was. I think you're spot on, they get in each other's ways. Nobody really commits to that. It's poor from Liverpool's perspective because that was such an inviting cross. And for me, Gakpo's got the momentum there to take control of that and go and head it. Should have been more dominant. I actually think that Salah might have been offside anyway had he put the ball in the net like his left foot was off to me. We've just seen Milner, Nunez and Oxlade-Chamberlain all getting ready for Liverpool. Henderson, 
do look, look, look like they need an injection of something in Liverpool, don't they? Start the second half. Not got in the game at all yet, bar that cross from Trent Alexander Arnold. Very interesting to see who's coming off for James Milner. Uh, yes, Mitoma might have the beating of Alexander Arnold. But uh, James Milner is now 37 years of age. Relish going up against Mitoma if that is the change that Jurgen Klopp is considering. Liverpool and it is Trent Alexander Arnold coming off and James Milner at 37 will come on to deal with Karu Mitoma. Something that Alexander Arnold has found difficult. Well it's difficult to accept, but I think Jurgen Klopp seen enough of that 1v1 duel to know it's gonna hurt Liverpool very, very soon if he doesn't do something about it, and he seems James Milner is the answer to that problem. Is replaced by Jordan Henderson, who will take the armband, and Darwin Nunez comes on for Harvey Elliott. It's exciting and important to get his pace into the game for Liverpool. We've been lacking that real physical presence and ability to run beyond and past people. He certainly brings that Nunez. so far in the early days of his career at Anfield. It's a big fee and some people have sort of questioned whether he's really looked an £80 million player at times. Yes, yes, you know, they may yes. have a case in some respects, but in his first season in a new league, I remember he's uh, only uh, reasonably recently moved to a new continent. He does already have 10 goals for Liverpool. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad, and I think that the, uh, the spotlight has been on him so heavily because they haven't had other players available to lighten that goal-scoring load. Mo Salah's been a little bit off it in terms of contributions with assists and goals. Oh, Milner, what a ball! Salah, the angle's horrible for him, but he does have support. Steele got a touch on it, and it didn't fall for Gakpo. What a passion, Milner. It was Trent Alexander-esque, wasn't it, from James Milner? brought on to do a defensive job but goes straight up the other end and puts in a ball like that. So they're going to ground too easily. Estupinha with the clearance, Pascal Gross to Joel Veltman. From Robertson and March. There's the pass, look at that, inch perfect. Lewis Dunk at full stretch, can't do anything about it, and it's good goalkeeping from Steele, that, because he commits there, he comes all the way out of the goal, kind of gambles that he has to intercept that cross and gets a solid hand on it. Good cup time. Very good. It's just poised perfectly, isn't it, after an hour. 1-1 one, one with both teams looking threatening. It's a tough one to call. Fifteen attempts in the game. It's been uh, a game which has promised goals and delivered so far two of them. It's a strong challenge in the card. Is out for Konate, second Liverpool player in David Coote's book. Quality, confident play from Brighton. And this is Ferguson again, always on the move. As a centre-back, it's very difficult to win that ball. And the centre-forward's always got movement and running across you and from behind you. And Konate just couldn't get there first and gets his yellow card. Gomez. Mitchitich. Gakpo. It's good. Cody Gakpo now, Lewis Dunk is chasing him and has pulled him back. 
That'll be a yellow card for the Brighton skipper all day long. Well, Lewis Dunk just does what he wants McAllister to do early on in this move. He had a chance, McAllister, just to foul him early on, and instead Lewis Dunk has to do quite a blatant shirt pull. He's very close to his own box as well. Good run from Gakpo. Having conceded the free kick, Lewis Dunk now is organising the defensive wall in tandem with his goalkeeper. There's uh, two in it. And then the rest of the Brighton team lined up on the edge of the penalty area. Milner's little dink ball in, he's looking for Konate. There might have been a bit of shirt pulling there. Liverpool certainly thought as much. Which is then adjudged to have conceded a foul. Just have a look at this on Konate. There's a lot of bodies in that area. Not too sure if there's actually a, a contact that makes him go to ground. Perhaps Estupinian from behind has just got a little bit too much of him, but. Referee felt Canate went down easily. So, uh, Gilmore is getting ready for Brighton. This is Darwin Nunez for Liverpool. And Henderson, Thiago looking for the middle one two with Robertson still scrapping for it. Liverpool that nearly came off. Lovely idea from Thiago, pass and follow this area of the pitch. Good spot for Nunez, but just that little bump into Robertson in the box. Tries to get the the, the pass back, and Brighton really get the bodies in there, able to deal with it. winner's medal from his dad who uh, was part of the successful Brazilian team of 1994 Mazinho Thiago is an Italian born Spanish international with Brazilian parentage playing in England here goes Mohamed Salah Substitution now. I think straight away James Milner has tried to make a statement on Matoma. Got tight a couple of times, made that tackle just to let him know he's not going to get it easy against him. So it's Danny Welbeck who makes way, and Billy Gilmore comes on. The 21 year old Scott comes on for what is only a ninth appearance for Brighton. He joined the club from Chelsea just before Graham Potter moved the other way. Yeah, Brighton just switching to that 4-2-3-1 a little bit more with McAllister, it looks like. Going to play that slightly more advanced midfield role, number 10, with Gilmore and Gross as the two sitting in front of the two centre-backs. 
pretty much the normal shape that Brighton would play. I, I can't remember the last time I've seen them play with two up, as they have no. for the first 66 minutes of this game. No, I think if you're going to pick Welbeck and Ferguson, it almost kind of just guides you to that formation, doesn't it? It's been pretty effective, it has to be said. They've played well, Brighton. That's well won by uh, Gakpo. And it is a free kick to Liverpool. We are now midway through the second half of this game. Remember, we do have replays in the fourth round of the FA Cup, so it could be that for the second round in succession, Liverpool need two bites at the cherry in an FA Cup tie, having beaten Wolves in round three. Thanks, Header. Milner, Gakpo, Milner, put behind by Lewis Duncan. I think the saying that they felt Milner just got a little arm as he was about to deliver that cross. Yeah, it's good, honest play from James Milner, stays on his feet and stays strong for that cross. Esther Pinyan certainly wasn't too close to the ball as he bounced his shoulder into him. I think that's what Liverpool and James Milner weren't too happy with. Milner's delivery for Liverpool. Oh, and Nunez with the header, which went over the top of Salah. It's retrieved. But, uh, sorry. What a professional James Milner has been. He won his first of two FA Cup winners' medals 12 years ago. Amazing player. What an example of how to conduct yourself fitness-wise, how he looks, looks after his body. To be playing at this level at that age is a real achievement. Liverpool fans enjoying Darwin Nunez. Putting pressure on the man in possession. It is a goal kick to Brighton. Good pressure, isn't it? Look how high... Liverpool have started there, Thiago all the way in, Henderson all the way in, trying to apply pressure to Brighton because they're just playing out no matter what Brighton, doesn't feel like they're going to go long today and just try and bypass that area of the pitch and, and hit the front, they're going through or wide every time. It's interesting isn't it that Darwin Nunez is on the left of the three and Gakpo is, is down the middle. Certainly, where Jurgen Klopp sees him. You know, I don't think you bring a player to the club and spend that kind of money and play him in a position where you don't really think he's going to play for you straight away. I think you know we've all been assuming that he's playing there because Nunez isn't available or Firmino can't play there or whatever. But perhaps that really is the role that, that Jurgen Klopp sees him fulfilling for, for Liverpool. That's Alisson. to the last 20 minutes of the Amex, well controlled by Estupina. Curling ball by Duncan to Mitoma. Konate coming across, great ball in, oh! Well, Alisson gets a big pat on the back from Andrew Robertson. It was brilliantly played from Mitoma to March. Well, March cannot believe it. This is brilliant from Mitoma. Look at the pass outside the right boot. And it just hits Allison, bounces back off and hits Solly March straight in the face. I mean, or in the chest, it's a sure goal. Just lifts it a couple of inches more. It's in the back of the net. Brilliant play from Brighton. Now Mitoma again. Estupina. Joe Gomez. Solly March. Blocked by Robertson, headed out by Milner. Pascal Gross. Konate for Liverpool who are hanging on here. Henderson, Mohamed Salah. And he's found an out ball. Darwin Nunez into Mohamed Salah. He's fouled by Tarek Lamptey. Well, tough for Tarek Lamptey here. Perhaps he doesn't get any of the ball, but he's not masses of contact on Salah either. 
I think Salah's momentum makes it look a lot worse as he's falling backwards anyway. Not too much contact, but certainly doesn't win the ball, Lamptey. to Robertson. Nunez. Yes. Yes. might have a shot there and then yeah. jabbed the pass to nowhere in particular. Yeah, I thought the shot was coming. I think that was the better option as well. Have a go from that area. at Thiago something or I'll take him off I'm not sure if he was referring to Nunez there in terms of just ha he, he looked like he was a bit annoyed that he didn't have the shot maybe yeah. that's what he's on the pitch for be a threat you get half a yard pull the trigger There. How early did Joel Veltman drop into that space and read that? Used all of his experience, Joel Veltman. Made it look easy. It was great anticipation. And he's got that bump on the head off uh, the Brighton goalkeeper, didn't he, Jason Steele? Gomez. Ferguson losing it. Richie Titch for Thiago, then Gomez to Henderson. Mitoma to Estupinian, and Milner recovers. And that's a forward run, actually, as Mohamed Salah. Just slows it down and finds Stefan Mojetic. This is Cody Gakpo to Robertson. And he's had limited opportunity, Robertson, to get forward in this game. Maybe that's something that he's had to slightly reduce for Liverpool at the moment. He's more of focus and attention on being good defensively giving them a solid base to build from than, than him getting forward. I think he sacrificed that a little bit, Andy Robertson. Salah. to win that race with Solly March. Good starting position, as they say, for goalkeepers. Well, he had to get there. Solly March running from all the way across the other side of the pitch.
Liverpool has broken the fourth official's board at a very inopportune moment because Liverpool would quite like to get Curtis Jones on. They have to revert to old school technology. Surprised they haven't got a backup. They probably have to be fair. a little bit of a low, it might be uh, the calm before the storm as both sides push for a winner in the latter stages of the game. Both teams really fighting hard for possession of the ball, lots of quick pace turnovers and little loose balls being won and then overturned again and teams trying to play out, it's been a fascinating game. Here is Curtis Jones to come on for Liverpool, by far his most uh, memorable moment in the Liverpool jersey came in this competition. You may remember it when uh, Jurgen Klopp picked a very, very youthful Liverpool side for an FA Cup tie against neighbours Everton at Anfield. And that man curled in the winning goal, and a brilliant goal it was. He's on for Thiago. Nunez just beaten to it. Tough one to judge for Lamptey there. Wanted to take it without bouncing, but realised he couldn't get there, then had to adjust his position. Done, done well to deal with that ball in the end. Tonight, Skillmore into McAllister and on to Estupina. by Gilmore, Jones, Nunez, just about holding on to possession Liverpool, and then they do lose it, and here's Solly March, just kept that in, it's not a good clearance by Gomez, and Ferguson from close range couldn't steer it goalwards. What an important block that is from Canate, Solly March here, he sees by Sesic and he just knows he's got the beating of him on the outside. Perfect touch, cuts it back, and look at that for a block. Brilliant. It's only Roberto De Zerbi's 17th game as Brighton manager, and three of them have been against Liverpool. A 3 all draw at Anfield, a 3 0 win here, both in the league. And this on a knife edge, 10 minutes to go. Ferguson and dunk into the gloves of Alisson. Going to retreat quickly now because Mohamed Salah is up there. Alisson's delivery. Not did enough. That's a foul by Cody Gapper. Delivery which has put Kanate out a little bit. McAllister went to ground. The fans are hooting and hollering, but play goes on. He's had a few of them in this game, hasn't he? Kanate just about close enough in contact with the ball to warrant that kind of shoulder charge. Great early spot from Veltman, though, wasn't it? To play that over the top and down the line. Well, it looks like a foul to me. Yeah. It, it, it's the position that he puts his shoulder in. You'd have to say that McAllister probably is the wrong side of him. So the contact then is more from behind. Gets away with it, Canate. In no mood to get up at the moment, Alexis McAllister. Let's have another look. Oh, it's close. It's, it's almost on the side, Steve. It's, it's very, very tight to say whether that is a... A foul from behind, because they're both close enough to the ball to warrant going for it, or whether or not he's on the side of McAllister and is really on that fine line. And, and then if you judge it to be a foul, you have to start thinking about, is it denial of a goal scoring clear goal-scoring opportunity? Absolutely. Well, Alexis McAllister is getting some treatment here. 
scored twice in Brighton's third round victory at the Riverside Stadium against Middlesbrough did McAllister and it must be that contact on the back of the neck of Canate's arm on McAllister what he has the problem with so can't see too much other than that as to why he'd still be down Uh, I think with seven minutes to go, the way the game has been, particularly in the second half, Matt, would you agree that it might be Liverpool who'd be happier to go to a replay than Brighton? I, I agree with that. I think Brighton have, have edged it in terms of dominating the play, being more creative, looking more solid as a team. And Liverpool have relied on, on those counters, really, or just the turnover of possession and hitting Brighton when they're a little bit too far exposed so Liverpool, Liverpool will be happy to take this back for a replay and McAllister is okay and as you just saw Liverpool's uh, Brazilian Fabinho is coming on Stefan Vajcicic makes way with a bit of his education completed Six to play, 1-1. One, one. The goal now would very likely be enough to take whoever scores it into the fifth round of the FA Cup. Brighton players, by the way, with accurate passing in the opposition half. It's the top five players in the game. It just all happened to be Brighton players. Well, that says a lot, doesn't it? We're just asking who do we feel has edged it and will Liverpool be happy to take this to a replay? I think they will. The stat just backs that up. Ferguson marched back into the feet of the centre forward. That's a poor challenge from Fabinho, who has made a less than illustrious start to his uh, brief appearance on the pitch here. Uh, yeah. I think that's two touches. He gave the ball away with the first, and he's got a yellow card for his second. Well, he knows it as well. He's not really trying to hide the fact that it was a poor challenge, poorly timed. It can happen when you've been on the bench for a while. Coming on, trying to get used to the speed of the game, and it's a fast pace in these closing minutes. There's two poor tackles, that's a bad one. And the trailing ankle of Ferguson really catches him. Fabinho's next Liverpool appearance will be his 200th. He's been a good signing from Monaco, but he's not had a great season. Doesn't look happy with that either, does he? Looks very disappointed in himself. Yeah. He's got to kind of get over that. Sometimes when your confidence is a bit low and you, you're you not feeling like you're up to the speed of the game. Oof, yeah, it doesn't, yeah. doesn't look any better with repetition, does it? No. Nowhere near the ball. I think he's feeling bad on the actual choice that he made to actually go for that. It's one of those ones where you endanger the safety of the opposition in a in a reckless fashion I think that comes under that bracket it's a really painful one are going to make a change Dennis Undav the uh, German center forward is going to be coming on has been uh, used pretty sparingly so far this season by Brighton a player that uh, was the top scorer in the Belgian league last season with uh, Union Saint-Gilloise which are a uh, part of the club of Brighton 
Shake of the head from Lewis, tucked to Jordan Henderson here. I think he's a bit more upset with himself for, for injuring him like that. I think he knows that it was a poor decision to go for that ball, and Ferguson doesn't look like he's going to continue. It should be a devastating blow for a young man who's made such an impressive start to his career in English football. He's on his feet, I'm very pleased to say. Yeah, it's good to see him walk off. And Ferguson is replaced by Dennis Undav. Eleventh time this season, he's come off the bench to represent Brighton. He has two goals so far in his career with the club. He's a German, 26 years old. And he's going to get 90 seconds plus added time of this fourth round tie. to Brighton. Oh, Brighton's really famous FA Cup victories came at Hanfield against Liverpool. 40 years ago now, they beat Liverpool in a fourth-round tie at Hanfield. Jimmy Case, who was a former Liverpool hero, scored Brighton's winning goal on that occasion. And it looks very much now as though they will meet there again in a fourth-round replay four decades on. forward, Mitoma popping up right side, looking for Lamptey, Robertson stretching was always going to be late, it's always going to be a yellow card. Well, McAllister there, really brave into the tackle, he sees it pop loose, Robertson's fully committed and he kind of jumps in as well, McAllister, almost anticipating this tackle going to come in, but Robertson certainly is the later one of the two catches him right on top of the ankle. Four yellow cards now in the game for Liverpool. Bajicic, Konate, Fabinho, Robertson. Moving terribly smoothly and nor is Ferguson as he's finally made his way around the pitch. Deserve it. Let's feel like he does play Liverpool almost every week. If this goes to a replay, it'll be four meetings in his first 19 matches as Brighton boss. Pascal Gross with a free kick. Estupinian lobbed up nicely. It's come to Mitoma. Brilliant feat! Oh. What a finish from Karu Mitoma to send Brighton into the fifth round of the FA Cup. Absolutely brilliant from the Japanese. What a find he is! That is so calm, so composed, and surely knocks the holders out of the FA Cup. Brighton 2, Liverpool 1. Well, if there was going to be a goal worthy of winning this cup tie, then this is it. What a finish from Mitoma. I love this ball from Estepinien, just really lops that to the back post, but then it's all about Mitoma's poise, his quality, 
his intelligence here, how he delays his touch, has that there, that little drop inside, and then the quick finish with the right foot into the roof of the net. I mean, he's been the man of the match for me before this goal, but this must just confirm it. Well, they are checking for a possible offside. That is one of the best finishes you are ever likely to see. Talk about composure in a tight area, but is it going to count? Neil Swarbrick is the video assistant referee, and they are double-checking. I mean, it must be on that initial delivery of the free kick, I assume, whether or not there was a, a Brighton player straying offside, because Esther Pinyan lobs that backwards from a position. It looks like the lines say it's going to count. Brighton are heading into the fifth round of this FA Cup, surely. And what a joy that a goal of such quality is not chalked off from a player of such audacious skill. I mean, that touch there sells Joe Gomez and to hit it as quickly as what he does when the other Liverpool players are coming in for pressure. I mean, he's, he's just one step ahead in terms of his thinking, his reaction time. He's had a great afternoon. Here's Darwin Nunez for Liverpool, though, at the other end. And that's a goal kick. I think that was Mitoma who played it on to Darwin Nunez, wasn't it? Well, there's always got to be a tinfoil cup. And it's being lofted high by Brighton supporters. Five minutes were indicated, as you can see, we're into the last of them. Goal scored in that five minutes, though. So there'll be a little bit more to add on. Brighton are also considering bringing on Jan Paul van Heck, the Dutch defender, to try and use up some time. Milner to Jones. It's a free kick to Liverpool. Brilliant, brilliant goal. The FA Cup is slipping out of Jurgen Klopp's fingers. In goes the free kick. Robertson. Henderson. This has to result in a goal. Van Heck is coming on to it. Lanty is going to go off. The referee quick to guide Tariq Lamptey off the pitch urgently. He knows there's barely any time left for Liverpool to restart. Liverpool's throw in. Joe Gomez with the throw. Curtis Jones. James Milner. This will touch from the time that there wasn't. It's a goal kick and that might do it. I strongly suspect that when Jason Steele takes this goal kick, the referee David Cook will blow his whistle. And Liverpool's time as FA Cup holders, or well, their opportunity to defend the trophy will be over. I think off the balance of the game, you can't deny it. That Brighton have probably deserved this win. They've been superior, especially in this second half. And there it is. Brighton have beaten Liverpool for the second time in 15 days. Much tighter on this occasion. But it is Roberto De Zerbi's side who deservedly go into the fifth round of the Cup with a quite brilliant winning goal from Karu Mitoma.
brilliantly, brilliantly taken by the Japanese, who is having a wonderful season. And Brighton advance. The holders are out. It has finished at the Amex. Brighton 2, Liverpool 1.